after the Oklahoma Sooners won 73 to nothing on Saturday, Boomer freaking Sooner, by the way, you would have imagined that it would have been a great recruiting weekend for Oklahoma with a lot of the guys that were on campus. Now, I went down there and I talked to him because if you guys know, I sit in Section 35 in Row 72 up against that concrete wall right underneath the suites. Best spot in the whole stadium, I will say. But uh, I got to sit up there, so I get to look down on the recruits. I get to see who's there, and I kind of get to see from afar what their reactions are, like how they're kind of feeling, at least from afar, um, with while they're at the game. And so... Again, the general consensus was it looked like a lot of them were having fun. You saw them in groups, talking, laughing, enjoying their time. It didn't look like any of them were having a bad time. And I know we talked about some of the visitors that would be on campus, but we've actually got some news for some people that I didn't have on the list that actually showed up on campus, including a five-star athlete in Terry Bussey. Yes, you heard me right. And so we went down there. We got a chance to talk to Danny Okoye, Daniel Akinkumi. Uh, those two were on official visits. And let me tell you, Daniel said it was hot. And I agree with him. It was hot because uh, my seats are shaded. His sheets are not. So, uh, but guys, before we dive into it, before we jump into some of this recruiting news, go ahead, uh, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and jump down in the comments below and let me know what y'all's thoughts are about what the Oklahoma Sooners are doing on the recruiting trail. I know we just lost the five star defensive lineman and Dominic McKinley, but you would imagine, just like the race for Williams Winery, the race for Dominic McKinley's not over. And I promise you guys, the, when I see Williams Winery on the campus when i see him in that visitor section um i will be letting you all know i will be letting you all that now uh know that night when i get back from the game that williams when was on campus and we're going to talk about it we'll speculate about it but was not on campus this week and we're going to start out with his teammate that was on campus the three-star defensive lineman kamori moore obviously one out here uh visiting his new home because he is committed to the university of oklahoma but also celebrating Caden Green in his first game as a Sooner, right? They both went to Lee Summit North together. Pretty cool opportunity to see Kamori Moore there, uh, the three-star defensive lineman for Oklahoma. Honestly, guys, I'm telling you, this guy could rise into high four-star status, maybe even be a top 150 player by the time it's all said and done for the 2025 class. Kamori Moore just has that kind of motor on him, and he has that kind of talent. So, Something everybody needs to keep an eye out there. But we'll kind of shift to 2024, guys, and then we'll get into 2025. And uh, I think I have one 2026 guy on here. But I think the big news to start out with is the five-star athlete, Terry Bussey. Terry Bussey was on campus, and this was not one that I actually had uh, lined up for Oklahoma uh, at the beginning of the week when we did our preview against Arkansas State. Uh, I did not have him on there. But this is big because he's got two upcoming official visits, one to LSU on the 23rd or September 23rd, one to Alabama on September 9th. So it's where he'll be this weekend. He's been to Oklahoma. He's been to Texas on official visits. Oklahoma now has gotten two visits from Terry Bussey. Two visits. Or I think it's either two or three now. Terry Bussey has been believed that he's going to end up going to Texas A&M, where he already has taken three unofficials. He's taken four visits total to the University of Texas. But Alabama and LSU are right here in this race. When you look at the recruitment for Terry Bussey, Oklahoma has got to compete with these elite schools and obviously A&M, who we have struggled to recruit against over the past couple of years. So this is not going to be an easy win for the University of Oklahoma. But from what I could see standing up in Section 35 is, hey, Terry Bussey appeared to have been enjoying himself, talking to some of the other guys. You have a lot of OU commits that were on campus, which is good for you because they're able to help recruit during the game while the coaches are tied up on the sideline. Now, in my opinion, I don't feel like there could have been any better game for Terry Bussey to come to than this one. And the reason why is because Terry Bussey got to see the complete shellacking that Oklahoma gave Arkansas State and he gets to kind of see all the different ways that everybody's going to be used on the offense, right? Those wide receivers had a field day on the on, on, on the field. I mean, if you watched Andre Anthony uh, Petaway, you had Drake Stoops and Gavin Freeman, which, I mean, Terry Bussey could be a guy that may, might be able to do some special team stuff for you. So it was good to have him there. 
because he gets to see kind of how this offense is really going to roll. He gets to kind of see the future of Oklahoma football because we got to see Jackson Arnold hit the field in the second half. That was really exciting. OU fans were excited to see him there. He got actually got a standing ovation on his way onto the field. So uh, that was interesting. I, I do want to stress, don't call for Jackson Arnold this season because that's just not a good look if Oklahoma fans continue to call for the freshman quarterback and don't let their uh, – bona fide starter finish out a season so don't call for jackson arnold but terry bussey gets to see what jackson arnold is all about he gets to see what he's going to be walking into you had michael hawkins on campus so michael hawkins was able to recruit him there so that was a good look for oklahoma it's going to be interesting to continue to follow this recruitment though and kind of see is terry bussey really that interested in oklahoma i, I haven't been able to talk to terry bussey i'm still trying to get connected but if Oklahoma is able to position themselves in the top three or maybe even in the top two for Terry Bussey, then you would imagine Oklahoma and Emmett Jones might be able to get the deal closed. But going into some of the other visitors you had on there, obviously, like I said, Danny Okwe, the four-star edge rusher. So I got a chance to go there and talk to him. I was asking him, hey, what game should I come to this year? And uh, he said something interesting about how he might be out. I, 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 I might have heard this wrong, but he said he might be out the season which if that's true uh one i don't think it's going to hurt him on the recruiting trail because when you go look at danny okoye's film you just see how explosive he is and ideally the teams that are chasing danny okoye they know what they're getting and so i don't think anybody's going to get scared off by an ac sprain so uh one, we're praying for Danny Okoye to get better. We definitely want to see him hit the field. Uh, but two, it was nice to get Danny Okoye on the field, and I'm sure he'll be back for other games this season. What games those are, uh, we'll have to kind of wait and kind of see where Oklahoma stands there. But it definitely was nice to get Danny Okoye, the four-star edge rusher, uh, on field. And then you had three-star safety Michael Boganowski and his parents, Mike Boganowski. It was nice to get them on because this is a recruitment that Oklahoma fans have been like, hey, when's this one going to wrap up? We're having to go up against K-State here, and we shouldn't be in a recruiting battle this long with K-State. Ultimately, it looked or it feels like that recruitment might start to wrap up here pretty quickly. Uh, I'll be following up with the Boganowskis this week. I was going to let everybody get through Sunday and follow up with people Monday and the following days uh, to really just kind of get a sense where everybody's at. But it feels like the Boganowski recruitment should be wrapping up this month. And then you got Michael Patterson McDonald. Again, great to get him on campus because you know you commit a guy that knows David Stone. So maybe, you know, he's got messaging, messages from David Stone to give to some of these twenty uncommitted 24 guys and 2025 guys. You had Andy Bass on campus. We're going to meet him, uh, I believe, next week or the week after. We'll, we'll get pictures and stuff there. So you guys stay tuned for that one. Uh, Daniel Akankumi, so the three-star offensive lineman out of London, England, was on campus. So got a chance to catch up with him. Again, it was hot. He's going to be taking visits to Clemson, Ole Miss, and Miami. Uh, so we'll have to kind of probably wait for all three of those to uh, kind of take place. At this point, I'm putting in a prediction for Oklahoma. Uh, I'll be dropping that over on my Instagram. So if you guys uh, aren't following me over there, at the PG show underscore CFB. That's where you guys can find me on Instagram. And uh, I do drop predictions over there because, you know, I'm not affiliated with any recruiting website. So kind of got to do it on my own. But uh, Daniel Akinkumi, I would favor Oklahoma at this point. Uh, I would have favored Oklahoma, but I really wanted to get past the official visit and kind of get his fill and see where he was at. But I really like Oklahoma in this recruitment. And then you had Josh Isosa, uh, the three-star offensive lineman, who actually sat up in the suites. Yes, he was balling out. Uh, the offensive lineman out of Edmond, Santa Fe, he was there. Uh, he was enjoying his time. He actually went down towards the end of the game to go hang out with the recruits. You had three-star defensive lineman Bergen Kaisar there as well. You had offensive lineman Ezra Ballinger and offensive lineman Evan McKiller. Evan McKiller is out of Bixby, Oklahoma. So definitely probably looking at some more preferred walk-on takes there uh, for the Oklahoma Sooners, which is nice because we've talked about this before. Preferred walk-ons are going to drive competition and create that competitive depth that Brent Venables and the staff has talked about so much. So kind of getting to 2025. So we had a five-star offensive lineman in Michael Fasusi who was supposed to be on campus. I did talk to him. He was not able to make it to campus, just having troubles getting it up here. I mean, it, it, it's hard to play on a Friday night and get everything scheduled, get a ride up here. So Michael Fasisi was not able to make it up here, but he is going to 
potentially make it up later this season for a game. I'm going to try to talk him into UCF because I feel like that UCF game is going to be a really good game for the recruits to come to. It's been one that I've been throwing out. So just keep an eye on that, Michael Fasusi. And I would imagine Kevin Sperry will be there when he is there as well because Kevin Sperry is going to probably want to recruit that offensive line really well and get it strong. And if he has a chance to get a get in front of a five-star offensive lineman, he's probably going to do it. So that's not set in stone, but you could probably bet on it because he's only 30 minutes away. So then you have the four-star tight end, Nate Roberts, out of Washington, Oklahoma. Was committed to Notre Dame, decommitted. Now Oklahoma is in there like swimwear in this recruitment. Yes, I just said that. But Nate Roberts uh, took a picture with Brenton Venables in the hallway. Uh, there's somebody else with him. I couldn't really make out the name tag. I did not have him on the original visitor list uh, again in the, in the Arkansas State preview, but this is a good sign for Oklahoma. To get Nate Roberts on campus, that's a good sign. Now, Nate Roberts probably is going to have to be okay with Oklahoma taking two tight ends in 2025. Who could those two tight ends be? Honestly, I would like it to be like a Chase Lofton out of Nebraska or somebody like that. I think Chase Lofton is extremely talented. We got to see him at the BV camp. Uh, I've got some film that I can actually throw up into a short for you guys if you guys would like to see that. So jump down in the comments below and let me know. But Chase Lofton, I think, is a guy that I would, I would take alongside Nate Roberts. Get you two tight ends there along with taking Devon Mitchell in 2024. You would feel good. And then additionally, you had... Two wide receivers, Elijah Thomas and Jaden Nickens there. So that was exciting to have those two OU commits on campus, obviously recruiting for you, trying to get guys committed, and obviously enjoying their time. You had Xavier Ukponu, the three-star defensive lineman out of Denton Geyer, obviously supporting his teammates in Jackson Arnold, Peyton Bowen. Um, I did not see Eli Bowen there. I would imagine he was maybe sitting with his parents somewhere else. But I did not see him in the recruit section, so I'm not sure if he was there or not. But I would imagine he was. Uh, but Xavier Ukponu is there. This is a guy that I imagine is going to be a part of the Oklahoma class. I'm actually probably about to put in a prediction for him to land here. I really like where Oklahoma is sitting in the recruitment for Ukponu. And we'll probably try to get out there and see him either this year or for sure next year. And then in 2026, Oklahoma had the four-star offensive lineman Jackson Cantrell out of Nixa, Missouri, uh, which is right outside of Highlandville by the way. Uh, this is kind of where my parents are from. They're from Missouri in the Galena area, so I'm very familiar with Missouri and Nixa and all those areas, but Jackson Cantrell was there. Right now, he's ranked as one of the top players in this class, but obviously, there's not really any five stars yet in 2026, just because there's not a lot of evaluation for those guys yet, and so we'll have to really kind of see where Jackson Cantrell falls, but he is a talent that Oklahoma likes, and I definitely think Oklahoma could try to land. You would imagine if you're Oklahoma, you're going to have to go up against a K-State, a Kansas, a Missouri, a Nebraska for this kid, and then obviously other elite schools as well. So this is not going to be a recruitment that Oklahoma is easily going to be able to win, especially when it comes with a top-tier offensive lineman, but Oklahoma should be able to close this one down at some point. So, But that's what I was able to take away from the game. That's kind of what I was able to see. So it was uh, interesting there to see that next week for the SMU game. But we'll give you a little one here. Josh Isosa will be back, but he's going to be on his official visit for the SMU game. So that one's at 5 o'clock, Stripe the Stadium. I would imagine there's going to be plenty of other visitors. So I'll start messaging people, hitting people up, and kind of seeing who's going to be there and who won't. And we'll have a list for you guys probably Thursday. I plan to get that video out on Thursday. So, But guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and hit the subscribe button. Jump down in the comments below and let me know what y'all's thoughts are around this recruiting class for Oklahoma and exactly uh, what your thoughts are and what your feelings are for where Oklahoma can end the 2024 cycle.